Welcome to The Shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera, and today we're going to be learning how to cut and install a new fork. Pretty sure we only bought the Crown Fork Race installer because people yelled at us on the internet. For this task, you will need your new fork, which will come with a star nut, Allen keys, your headset and headset spacers, also the top cap, your stem, grease, crown race installer, star nut installer, pipe cutter, pipe file, paint pen, and a rubber mallet, which is my favorite tool. Okay, so I have done this a couple times, but I'm not quite sure I'm remembering correctly the order operations, but I think we're gonna put the, this is the crown race, right? The part Correct. around there. So we're gonna do that first. This doesn't look like it attaches in any way. You just put it on there and bang on it. Yep. I thought it was more sophisticated than that. Oh, I see why it doesn't fit, okay. Maybe put a tiny bit of grease on just cause it sure. decreases the likelihood of it creaking. I really like our grease gun. I'm really glad we have a grease gun now. It's my Christmas present to Mackie. Yep. Really romantic. Oh. It's a good task to start with because you just get to bang on things right out of the gate. Yep. Looks good to me. Obviously, like, you got a little grease happy there. You can also install your crown fork race with a piece of PVC, which we did for years. Pretty sure we only bought the crown fork race installer because people yelled at us on the internet. But I honestly don't, I don't understand what the downside is. It was fine. The next thing we're gonna do is basically cut this, measure the steer tube so that yeah. we can cut it. For that, we're gonna need our stem, these puppies, no, these puppies, yep. wrong puppies. Did not have an organized workspace today. I'm sorry guys, that's just unfortunately like, the way it's gonna go. So this is the part where you can really mess up. <laughs> I knew you were gonna bring up this story. Okay, so we're gonna put the silver thing down there. Does he have a name? Silver yeah. thing. The bearing. Headset bearing. I thought this was the headset bearing. They're both headset bearings. Gonna, I don't really need grease because we're just measuring. Correct. This is being a dumbbell. I think that's right. And then you just push the black guy down. But he was just sitting up there. This is the part where you determine the height of your steer tube and how much you need to cut off. Which depends a little bit on personal preference, but. Okay, so this is the part where once upon a time, Mackie and I were going to New Zealand for EWS races. I think so. Yeah. We were building our bikes like 48 hours before. Like, like you. you do, like we do every time. Cause it was like an early season race. And Mackie did this, but he didn't have the stem in there. <laughs> so he cut our brand new suspension too short. It was a bad day. How's the Taylor Swift song go? To make a long story short, it was a bad time. The problem with marking it above that spacer. Oh, I need the little space for the top cap. So it needs to be slightly shorter. It needs to be below the top cap. Exactly, so if you do it on this higher we line, it would be space. above and we'd have to put another spacer on. Keep a clean workspace, folks. All right, next up, I'm gonna cut her. We use these pipe clamp cutter thingies. Much better than a hacksaw. Measure twice, cut once. Measure with your stem on both times. On the high end of the lower mark, basically, was what we were deciding. Yeah, right at the top of the lower mark. Yeah, that looks good. And then you don't need to tighten it too much initially. <laughs> you just want to spin it around once and then tighten it a little bit more. Tightened it too much, didn't yeah. I? Now we're in business. So the way these pipe cutters work is- They're brilliant. They really are nice. They basically, the blade just like squeezes its way in between the metal as opposed to like sawing like a saw does. So you also don't get stuff flying everywhere into the air. We used to do this with a hacksaw, I feel like. Yeah, but we didn't have a guide. <laughs> so it was not, it was not a good situation. But you do what you have to. Yeah, run what you brung. Use the tools you have at your disposal. We definitely could have put this in the vise and this would have been easier, but at this point it seems silly. Actually, you could, that might be the easiest way to do it right now. I feel like I'm close. Mm, nah. Not really. There you go. So that it wasn't clamping on the part that was not straight. Yeah, this is better. Ouch. This is going way faster. Here she goes. Boom. Okay, and while we have that in the 
thingy, we're gonna go ahead and I don't know why you do this, is there a reason? Yeah, because we'll feel it right now. Feel on the inside and the outside. See how it's like kind of raised? I guess, yeah. This just files it down and makes sure there aren't any sharp parts. You wanna show off how the pipe file works? And then the other side does the outside. Oh, so I need to do both sides. Yep. One thing that you will notice about pipe cutters is like if you feel the outside, you see how it's slightly raised? Mm -hmm. That will make it hard to get the, so like to go through more. the bearing. Well, either that or just use a regular file to file that down a little bit. I think it's okay though. Yeah, I mean, try good. putting the, the top part of the headset, which is still on the bike. That fits. Cool, great. This task is kind of a pain in the butt by yourself, I would say. We're gonna grease. Oh boy, that didn't, that's not gonna work. We're defying gravity. <laughs> Just gonna use my fingers. One thing that's noteworthy about this frame is that the bearing cups are integrated, meaning the frame itself is the right shape to hold the bearings. Some bikes, you actually have to press in your bearing cups first before you can put in the bearings. It's nice that we don't have to do that. Because you need a bearing press, which we don't have. Yeah, well, you can also use a two by four and a rubber mallet and <laughs> things like that. We've done it. <laughs> this guy goes on. All right, there it is into its the cup. Why do I feel like this looks short? Now I'm freaking out again, but there's no way. Now we're good. Oh. What? You forgot something. What? You're gonna you're gonna realize it in a second. You're gonna put those on. Did I lose and then you're gonna put the stem on and then what are you gonna do? Top cap is right here. Which is gonna do what? Okay. Rewind. What did you forget? Forgot the star nut. Star nut. Because we're disorganized and I can see it. Therefore, out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, because we've had some bikes that don't have those. Yeah, if you have a carbon steer, which like the road bikes and gravel bikes do, you don't use a star nut. We need our star nut installer, which is over here. I need the rubber mallet and cool. <laughs> this would be the part where I would Google which way does it go? <laughs> like that? Tell me you're thinking both directions. This is gonna bend upwards if you put it in that way. This way is gonna go in, so it's gonna be like that. Yeah, because you want it to go in, but you don't want it to come back out. The star nut installer is a tool that you should actually invest in. We have tried many times to install star nuts without one, and it's a really terrible idea. Yeah. Just not worth it. I feel like we did succeed, but. Oh yeah, but yeah. it was not great. And they, the star nuts then weren't straight and like, it was bad. Okay. So that just fits on like that, which keeps it all happy and straight. Ready? Ready. It may not be, yeah, nope, so. that didn't work. It's because the suspension is compressing and because you have a nice floor. So you can either put it in the vise or just hold it from the bottom of the crown. It's not working, is it? Oh. Yeah. So you're, you're getting there. Okay. You need to wait until it's flush. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it wasn't, it would go down, but it doesn't go down. All right, give it a look. This should definitely, should definitely be the thumbnail. There ah. you go. Basically, oh, you yeah. just don't want a gap there. All right. That would have been easier if we had remembered it earlier, but that's just how life goes sometimes. Okay, back, back to where we were a bit ago. Oops. We've actually gotten a lot of questions about these, this uh, stem cap. Oh yeah. This is Niner's Y-A-W-Y-D, you are what you drink oh. stem cap. And it allows you to put a bottle cap on top of it, we'll just put a like link in the description. that guy. Just put one on so do the top cap first? Yeah, because yeah. you want to squeeze it together first. Yeah, because it's not quite squeezed steps. together, is it? Yeah. 
There she goes. Yeah, you don't want your headset to be too tight because you want to be able to turn. Yes, <laughs> turning is good. Seems good. Now we'll go ahead and tighten the stem, but I mean, it's not straight or anything, so we'll be coming back to this. I'm just a fan of tightening, leaving bolts in a tight position so that they don't disappear. So we're gonna put your handlebar on. Carbon prep. Do I have to take this all the way off? Nope, probably not. I suspect you can just loosen it and then slide it through. Which way is up? We're gonna go from this side because there's a buckshot in the way. So why do we use carbon prep? Why not grease, for example? Um, it has something to do with the like grittiness of carbon prep, yep. right? Because it's like preventing it from sliding back and forth. Yeah, as well as lubricating it. But I just, I don't really, I don't really know beyond that. That's that's the that's reason. It. That's yep. all. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. You don't want carbon things to slide. Yeah, I mean you don't want anything to slide generally, but. Well, you want your bearings to slide. That's a good point. But I mean, yeah, I get what you're saying. But you really don't want carbon to like score. Yes. Which happens on handlebars when people like say if I you left have this a thing in there. Define thing. Right there. Oh, I take that out. Yeah. Okay. See, that's what you don't want to do. <laughs> that was about what I was going to say. So it's probably fine because it's loose enough. Come on. I think you may have to pull it all the way out. Seriously? I have to take it all off because of that stuff. No, not off. Just pull out that one screw. Oh. Be gone. What you don't want to do is like tighten your carbon bars like fairly tight and then turn them. Same with like brake levers on your carbon bars or C -post. shifter levers, C-post. Yeah. Basically things that shouldn't spin, you want to not spin. <laughs> and if you have like weird lines on your bars, your carbon bars, you should replace them. That looks sort of like scratches. Yeah, even if it's just a scratch, I don't know, you don't want to impale yourself with your handlebars. Which I almost did one time. You almost did. It was scary. But yours didn't actually show any sign, did they? Yeah, they were scored. Oh, they were. Yeah. That's that's how I learned. <laughs> a very valuable lesson. And you also don't want to over tighten. You could use a torque wrench or you could just wing it, which is what we're going to do because we've tightened a few carbon bars in our life. On this stem, it wants you to close the gap at the top first and then tighten the bottom ones. Close the gap. Mind the gap. Mind the gap. And you guys will notice that as Sid's tightening these, she's like alternating. So this one says close the gap, so she did the top two first. And then after that, kind of alternating the bottom two and then the top two so that everything is evenly tightened. And this is how to install a fork in one minute. The first step is to install the crown race, which will be included with your headset. Smear some grease at the bottom of the steer tube where it meets the fork crown, slide the crown race onto the steer tube, curved side up, and hit into place using a race setter or a piece of 1.5 inch PVC. Next, decide how long to cut the steer tube by dropping the lower bearing onto the fork, sliding the fork through the head tube, installing the upper bearing, compression ring, dust cover, and then your stem and however many headset spacers you want. If you aren't sure, err on the side of too many spacers because you can always shorten it later. Now mark the steer tube a few millimeters below below the top of the top spacer. Remove the fork from the frame and carefully cut at your mark using a pipe cutter or hacksaw and guide. Deburr the inside and outside of the steer tube using a pipe reamer or file. Now install the star nut using a star nut setter. Then wipe down the fork and install it in the frame, this time with grease between the crown race, lower bearing, lower bearing cup, upper bearing cup, upper bearing, and compression ring. Add your spacers and stem and install the top cap. Tighten the top cap bolt first so that the headset is tight but not sticking, then tighten the stem bolts. Now install the handlebars, alternating tightening the bolts so that they tighten evenly, and you're done.